All right, folks. Hey, have you heard this before? It's not the plan. It's the planning. It could not be more true with retirement planning. Hey, folks, it's pretty easy to craft a retirement plan that solves with your expenses. OK, all you got to do is go into your spreadsheet and adjust your spending, adjust rates of return, uh, move the timing of Social Security around. Uh, move around the age that you're going to retire and adjust your one-time spending and you can make it solve. It's not really that hard. But the problem is, I guarantee you, my plan and your plan is wrong. It's not going to happen this way. The power comes from planning comes from stress testing your plan. Where is it going to fail? So you've got your plan laid out with all these decision points. Where is it going to fail? And I'll give an example on that in a second. All right. Okay, folks, here's the plan. Um, and I've got just eight variables here I'm going to go through. But say, hey, your plan says I'm going to retire at 57, you know, and that all works. You're going, your expenses are going to be 6000 Your rates of return, you put in 7%. You're going to take Social Security at 62. Inflation's 3%. Uh, I'm going to live till 90. Um, I'll talk about this crazy spending here in a second. And then we're going to just downsize our home, $200,000. You throw that all into your Excel, spe Excel spreadsheet. Sorry. And it all works. But like I said, it's all about the planning, the stress testing. Where can we make this plan fail and we do it on purpose in a simulation versus, versus real life. I don't think anybody wants to fail their retirement plan in real life. So let's find the weak points. Okay, so retire at 57. Let's stress test that. Hey, I'm 50 now. This is not true. <laughs> I'm 50 now. But uh, hey, what if I put in 50? What if I put in 53? What if I put in 55? Does it still solve because I think failure of your plan is you retired 57 where you could have retired at 53. To me, that's failing. So, hey, let's stress test the plan like that. Expenses, $6,000 a month. Well, let's finish 6,500, 7,000, 9,000. Let's get the plan to break. Where does it break at um, with expenses? Rates of return, you enter 7%. What about five? What about four? What about nine? And you may say, why, why nine? Well, what if all your plans, uh, you know, this is a good problem to have. <laughs> you uh, plan Roth conversions in your taxes uh, based on making 7% and it actually gets nine. You may have needed to do more Roth conversions to pay less taxes on a yearly basis. So you'd like to know what happens if, my, if I have great returns, should I be doing more tax planning? Huge. Also, what are you going to do during a bear market? What if, what if this is zero? What if this is zero? What happens? Where does it blow up first at zero? Is it eight years out, nine years out, 10 years out? Does it blow up at all? So what does it look like stress testing? Social Security timing. Hey, I'm planning on taking that at 62. Well, what happens if I take that at 70? Does that provide more security for my spouse to maximize uh, the primary earner's Social Security or is it best to take it at 62? There's a financial aspect to that, and then there's peace of mind associated with that by delaying that. So make that blow up. Inflation, a lot of people just put in a default 3% because that's what it's been long term. Well, what happens? Where does the plan fail at 5% or 7%? You put in 7% inflation, it should adjust your expenses by 7% each year. And then your rate of returns may be low. So say you put in 7% inflation and 5% returns. What happens? You need to know about that, okay? Stress testing it. Early death. So many people put in 90, 95. I've even had a person put in 100. Uh, you know, everybody's biggest fear is uh, running out of money, um, which I don't think it should be. I think regret should be your biggest uh, concern, looking back with regret. Well, what happens if one of you dies at 65? Do you, what happens to pensions? What happens to your taxes? What happens to your Social Security if one dies early? So you need to stress test that. Make the program fail, okay? Uh, crazy spending. 
Uh, I actually have a line item in my expenses uh, called crazy spending. And that is, I like to see where my spending blows up. Okay, so I'll add like $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month, $2,500 a month, and find out where do I end up with $0 when I'm 90 years old. I like to know that. That way, you know, if something breaks on my house, a, a furnace, an air conditioner, a, a roof or something like that, hot water heater, and I have to spend an extra $1,000, I don't stress it because I know, a you know, if things happen every month for a whole year, I'm still fine because my crazy spending number is $1,500 a month or something like that. Uh, and then downside, you know, another example of a one-time expense. Some people put in, hey, uh, I live in a $600,000 home. I'm going to downsize to a $400,000 home. So I got a windfall coming in of $200,000. Well, what if that's zero? What if, so stress testing that down to zero. So when you're coming up with your plan, one, be honest with your numbers. So many people lie about these numbers. They'll put in a rate of return of like 4%. And then they'll put in uh, just very conservative numbers uh, for death and, and for inflation. And, and they just try to make things work. And I say, hey, put in the honest numbers so you can get an honest view of taxes, honest view of your stress points. Be accurate of what you think the numbers were going to be. But then also stress test it to the low side or to the high side, whichever's worse. You know, you want inflation to be low <laughs> and you like rates of return to be high. So put that in there. Don't, don't be conservative with your numbers. Hey folks, new retirement. There's a link below to it for free two weeks. Use my link, okay? I love this software. I've been buying it for a couple years now. Everybody that uses it saying it's life-changing for them as they analyze their retirement. New retirement makes this stress testing extremely easy. What you do is you enter a pessimistic number, like say under uh, rates of return, you could put in 3%, and then you could put in an optimistic number, like say 9%, and then it, it actually will print out or analyze it with just a toggle of a, of a button, pessimistic, average, and optimistic. So in the case of rates of return, it would give you a 3%, 6% and 9% analyzing all your taxes, all your incomes, how strong is your plan. Very easy to do to stress test your plan. Keep in mind, folks, like I started this uh, discussion off with, the intent of creating a plan um, is great in retirement. You have to have that in retirement. You can't go into retirement blind. blind. But most people think once they come up with a plan that solves, they're done. And I'm telling you, that's half of it. You're halfway done. you got to stress test it and find out where your problems are. If you know where your problems are, say, for example, it's an early death. Boy, hey, this system, it just blows up. Uh, you know, I got a 99% uh, probability if I die at 90. But if I die at 65, I'm down to 45% probability of success. Hey, you may want to buy an insurance policy. Uh, if that's the case, okay? And then you may, you know, it will dictate some of the your investments that you need to make. You may make, need to make, have a bucket strategy for handling uh, bear markets. So there's, if you know where you're going to fail, you can make decisions to buffer against that. Hopefully that makes sense. If this video hit the mark, let me know. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Definitely tell me where you're from this, Joe Out.